Hey guys, Supertorn here, and welcome back to Let's Play La Mulana. So, uh, last time, we went through the Graveyard of the Giants. This time, I'm placing a weight here in the Tower of Ruin so we can open up this chest, which is map. Nope, Sacred Orb. Another Sacred Orb. So much life. All of the life. And follow the name that means unnamed. Did we save any hint that means that? Did we? Did we actually save it? Um, um, yes. Moo is the nameless one. That's all you really need to know of that hint currently. Follow the name that means unnamed. Hmm. That hint is probably going to be important soon. Also, wait, don't jump. That'll crush you. I'm just going to go through lava because lava will not crush me. It burns, but many things burn. And you can see most of how this area will be set up. Or at least this passageway here, because once we're done with it, we're just pretty much done with it. Um, this here, don't whip it. Divine Retribution. Just just Divine Retribution. Um, can't you get to the sub-weapon from this side? Good thing to know. See, a kind, mischievous spirit. A lonely and mischievous spirit. We're going to have to find their mischief. Because that's going to be something which will help us out, I'm sure. Kill Salamander. Yay. And of course, there's a doorway here. A race that recorded their knowledge on walls. This knowledge will operate in a mechanical box as a virtual wise man. It shall awaken a wise man. Read the mural. Hmm. I wonder if that hint actually relates to that. I don't know. But, um, yeah, there's some real technological advanced things here. I mean, this is, this is tech place. It's all tech place. So um, we can't go down because divine retribution, that thing's in the way, all that crap. So let's go up. And up, we find, I don't remember the proper name of this enemy. I'm just going to call him Thunderbird because he is a bird of thunder. Oof. Yep, whipping that divine retribution. Don't whip. Just just don't whip the walls. That's usually, that's usually a smart thing is to not whip, whip walls. But if we attack him often enough and can kill him, freaking salamanders! Money, money! Let me get up to money. No, I want the money. Mm. Come on, salamander, reform so I can kill you. This is the uh, attack the salamanders have, and they will eventually reform, and you can kill them. Get myself. Ooh, I should have bought more weights, but I didn't buy more weights. Let's see. Yeah. Crushing that hand brings us mercy. And we open up areas for us to progress through. So to start off with, this area with the wolf. I can jump this. I know I can jump this. Another thing is it's really hard to see. Even I can barely tell knowing they're here. But there are invisible enemies on the screen going back and forth. And they can't hit you. They can't hurt you. But reasons. And here, however, we find... Our first Rosetta Stone style tablet. It has both the old and the new language, allowing us to get a bit of an understanding of the translation between the two. This tablet I use to try to brute force an understanding of the language, like make an actual this letter is this letter, and so I could actually read it. It worked with me to an extent, but it was more useful for one particular puzzle we're about to run into shortly, because there are two letters we need to figure out how to read. To my knowledge, in La Mulanese, there are about two letters, and being able to read... Also, there's a shop in on the screen. And being able to read the numbers and understand two of the letters is fairly important in La Mulanese. The numbers more so than the letters. Let's see, a puzzle we can't read. Tablet, rather. Go us. Can't really do anything on this side of the screen, actually. Because we come over here, it's a dead end, we whip anything, um, Divine Retribution. See, the ones that created Nua, ones that tried to imitate the power of the Great Mother, power to create, those wishes were not granted. Nua must have been that, then. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was mistaken thinking what Nua was. I'm going to have to look into that again, but we won't run into what I think it's supposed to be for a while, unfortunately. Oh well, also, Cross of Light. Thought I'd point that out. I know the shop's on the screen game, I'm just 
not completely sure how to open it up. Can I do anything over here? Can I do anything over here? Unless the shop is related to that. It might be. I'm not going to worry about it. Alright, so first things first is gold mine is right up here. Gold mine being the Grail Tablet. Yeah. Yeah, that seems pretty accurate. Sup, fairy ladies. By the way, the little shots, they don't hurt you. Danmaku fairies. Alright. Away. Kill you. Cross of lights are going to be important. Destroy this, though. To get in here. Place the weight. Actually, is that what we need to get into the shop? No. Maybe? Yes, yes, that was. Okay, I just I just left too soon. But placing the weight there gets us into the shop. And into the shop we go. Okay, dude. Snapshots. Analyzes images. I would like to buy, but I don't have enough money, sadly. Uh, that's going to be something I'm going to put my hands on quickly enough. For now, drop down here without getting crushed. And another area to explore. Come on. <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Skanda. Large clay doll. Holds the golden key to the source of the skies. He's a mini-boss. We'll, we'll deal with him soon enough. Now then, down here, is there a good hint for this, or no? I don't think there is. But there's a breakable wall here. Break that and we come into a new area. This area is fairly important. So you remember the other hints, we were told to follow the one the name that means nameless. We know that Mew is the nameless one. So we'd have to check to see what his name means. Now the easiest way to do this would actually be to go to the tablet where we got the hint, where we got this hint right here. And then what we'd want to do is turn off the reader so that you could just read it in the old language and see what the glyphs are. First time I did this, like I said, I brute forced it. I had a limited understanding of how to read La Milanese and I figured out what M and U was. M, U. Doing that will open up the chest and give us the Ankh Jewel. Now then, if we do this wrong, we hit one of the wrong ones, those platforms open up and they would drop us down to a lower area, like where the lava is and everything. Uh, however, first things first is I would like to grab something here, so I'm going to grab out the walls. And invisible platform to just jump walk through. And a pedestal to put a thing on. I'm pretty sure the weight there will have triggered the uh, opening of this. Pretty sure. And with this, we get the Earth Spear. The Earth Spear, I believe, is required to progress because we still can't get through this area here. I'm gonna put the freaking knife on. We still can't get through this area here. However, that little goblin head thing looks pretty suspicious. The Earth Spear attacks just straight down. And if we hit it enough to drop it, the lock on this will disappear and we can push this block out of the way. Yes. Which will allow us progress to enter the lower area here. And you see there's a front side, or there's a backside gate here which we can enter. And a message we can't read. I tried to brute force this one. I think I vaguely remember what that message is referring to once I actually read it with the proper translation, but we'll figure that out later. For now, we can see that the Infernal Cavern is the flip side. Something just went up in the background. I wasn't paying attention to what it was again! Ah! But we can see that the uh, Tower of Ruin is the flip side to the Infernal Cavern. First things first. Elder. Ah, yes, he got a hold of the people who made the, griff, the Glyph Reader. If we find a tablet which has the old reading and the new reading, the Rosetta Stones tablets, like we've already ran into the one, like I said, then we'll be able to figure out a bit more of the translation. And if we get, like, four scriptures that have this double writing, we'll be able to figure out how to read the old ones. Now then, down here, this room, you will understand why I hate this room. 
you will understand. Not right away. That, that, that understanding will come in time, but you will understand. Place that down. And we open up this passageway here. That's a trapdoor, as I recall very well. Freaking trapdoor. But we are back here in the proper area of the Infernal Cavern. And... We see we've solved the puzzle. This puzzle relates actually to this tablet right up here. Which I will go up to read. The more to the land that meets the eye, it's a pivotal location. Try a different path and return to this land again. If you look at this and how it's set up, you can see a great deal to the way it's set up. The one, the area more to the left looks to be the Infernal Cavern in its map. The one to the right, you can see an Ankh gem and a little tower icon on the bottom. That would be the Tower of Ruin. If we re-enter the Infernal Cavern from the Tower of Ruin, enter through the uh, backside gate there, you'll get that little pedestal to appear in this room. Which makes the um, Tower of Ruin and the Infernal Cavern a anomaly. Like it, fall, it goes against tradition of you need to destroy the uh, boss to unlock the backside gate and everything. But that rule you would see typically, and I'm not that worried that I'm low on health because I'm not that worried about it. Placing that there will do something, however, and if we warp out and back, and I should get it healed pretty freaking quickly, you'll see exactly what that means. Heal, no. Get a heal on you, no. I just want to heal. I will jump over here to get my heal. Good, got my heal. Alright, we have 224 health max. Destroy that, jump over it. Jump into this area. And now for why I hate this room. It's a boss room. This boss... Ugh. He didn't give me as much trouble on hard mode as... Well, I eh, no, he did give me about as much trouble as Sakit gave me on this playthrough. Eey, I don't like this boss. Uh, how much more can we do before we actually deal with that ball? Ooh, quite a bit, actually. Quite a bit. Mmm. <laughs> and we have a decent bit of time left in the video. Do we? Yeah, I think we do. A little bit. So what do I want to do next? Um, get a guidance, mausoleum, temple of the sun... That's going to be what we have to do next. At this point, as... I might be forgetting a few, something or another beside that boss, but coming to my mind, there is one thing left we would need to do in order to progress. Before that, though, hey, Molebrook, have anything new? Hmm. Oh, this hint's about that, isn't it? I'm going to save this. This hint might be about that. No, thanks, Mulbrook. You can go back to sleep. I'll, I'll wake you up in another minute. But you're responding to me, Mulbrook. You have to be awake. Besides, I just walked out and back in. You can't honestly tell me you fall asleep already. Uh, I still like Mulbrook. I'm gonna have to get that hint from her, though. Um, I'm assuming I have all the hints I need for this. This video might be a bit longer. I could just cut it off now, actually. No, no, because I want to start the next episode with that. So, we're going to find our way into Eden. Let's see, a find the source of a phenomenal trap in a pl place bathed in moonlight. Okay, so the first hint's actually a pretty easy one for us to figure out. Because this down here, that's a pretty phenomenal trap. You would want to use the hand scanner here, and just the hand scanner. If you place the uh, weight there, you get trapped, and the wall drops. Unless you move out of the way like I did. Which I did because I knew it was a trap, so go me. Another heal fairy. Alright, that's fine. Kill you. Um, is there anything more we can do over here? I don't think there really is. I only see the one warp... Unless we can open that up from this side, which I'll have to check, but... <sighs> Jump. 
Nope, I can't make it. I need the actual... No. I'll be able to... I'll be able to get on it now. Alright. So that is the first of many things we will need to scan in order to get into Eden. I say many, but there's actually four. Now you guys have already know the one hint which I've drawn a liking to and I've pointed out a few times, like the dancing man. We already know he's over here. Alright, so we'll just ride this right over to the dancing man. He's dancing! Look at him dancing. Read that as well. Something interesting happens. And now we want to go back over more towards this upper area of this temple. But first things first, let's read our next hints. So we have two more. Seek the place where they point towards. And uh, there's the dancing man. Within the hands of the four who reside in the palace bathed in the moonlight. Hmm. Within the hands of the four. Well, that's another one. And that'll be three of the four hints we need to get into Eden. Alright, so... With that done, we are almost prepared to properly enter Eden. And going up here, you can see that there are a bunch more pedestals open. I'm... I'm gonna need more weights before I do this, unfortunately, but oh well. I can go buy a bunch of weights because I have a ton of money now. However, there are four boxes before the final chest, and we need to have one more. Can I even get up there with the number of... I think I can. I think I can. So, we are going to go... No, I can't do anything. Yeah, I think Eden is what has to be done next. And that's fine by me, because I like Eden. This, of course, is another Eden hint. Open the five boxes, mind thy manners, and open them starting with the one closest. So, that's another... Mm. I think I see. I'm pretty sure these pedestals will raise... No, can't be. Mm, I don't know. The ped like That part of the puzzle I'm not that worried about. You can brute force it if all else fails. For now, however, that's all of our weights, so hopefully I don't screw this up. I can't read that. Jerk. Well, I've double jumped now, so maybe I can just kind of... Is it on this screen, or is it on that upper one? I think it's on this screen. It might be on the upper one. Where they all point towards. I, I know I can get up there somewhere. I know I can get up there somewhere. I know I can get up there somewhere. Come on, where is it? There it is. The final hint is either on this screen or the one above it, I believe. And this screen or the one above it. And it's looking to be the one above it. So I'll see you guys in a moment when I get back up top. Yep, right here, it's up on top. The face where it points towards. And that is our last Eden hint, which will give us proper entrance to Eden. Or rather, it'll open up the last pedestal so we can get to what we need for the proper entrance to Eden. Um, I think this one's closest. Now, how is it for um, here? Nope, not that one. Alright, so in this one? Alright, I see how this works. You need to open those four chests, starting with the one closest treasure chest. So that's going to be this one. And then the last two, which was easy. If you were to come here after getting each hint, you would see what order they were placed. Oh, I did it backwards, I think. Yeah, I, I probably did it backwards. This is only part of the reason why I bought a crap ton of weights. So I think it's going to be this, this, and then it's going to be down here. Yep, I did it backwards. All right. And with that, this will open up and give us the Fruit of Eden. 
Oh, Eden. Eden is... I like Eden. I like and hate Eden. I've said this a few times, and you're about to see why I both love and hate Eden. You're about to see why. So guys, this has been Silver Baton with Let's Play La Mulana. We went through the Infernal Caverns backside, which would be the Tower of Ruin. We found the boss for the combined areas. Got our way, our capable fighting said boss. But decided to move on in order to go somewhere new. And in this case, we are prepared to head into Eden. So next time, guys, we're going to go into Eden. And I'm going to show you just why I feel the way I do about it.